Okay. <lacht> Hi. Freunde der Tierwelten, sind die Huhn, ist hier in welche Richtung gehe ich? Ich habe keine Ahnung mehr, wo ich aufgehört habe. Ähm, aber willkommen auf Laser Gucken Land, dem gratis erreichbaren Minecraft-Server mit der IP 149.202.127.134. Wir hören heute weiter, DEFCON 21, den Talk von Much, Unexpected Stories from a Hacker Inside the Government. Wir sind gerade bei Minute 38, 28. Alles klar, 149.202.127.134, unbedingt mal auschecken. Äh, 20-Slot-Server, ähm, die Map ist geplant, <lacht> etwas längere Zeit noch hier online zu bleiben. Also ist das sozusagen ein gratis Vanilla-Server für Freunde und Familie. Alles klar, dann schauen wir mal. Oh nein, das ist das. Wenn Sie das nicht the Ethernet Board würde eigentlich direkt in die Memory und memory and boot von dem Netzwerk, selbst wenn Ihr BIOS nicht diese Kapazität hat. Naja, für den Kontext jetzt die letzte Episode anschauen. Die haben das so gesoffen, oder? Bei mir ist auch schon ein bisschen mehr. Das war doch das, wo er ihnen Cash gegeben hat für Drinks. Läuft die Aufnahme. There is an ATM machine that dispenses gold bars. Okay, nice. Very expensive gold bars. Not like you've got like a $200 withdrawal limit. I mean, these are in the tens, if not hundreds. I can't remember how high up the up price was. There might have been the ability to withdraw a million dollar gold bar uh, from it. And some of you might have seen the picture of Barnaby kind of going like that, you know, right next to the, 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 the thing. So Barnaby's had a few drinks. And they see the gold ATM machine. I thought, oh, I, you know, so, well, how do you think it works? And they're peering behind it and everything. And um, the uh, uh, the folks uh, who are, you know, the, the, I think it's the, the son or one of the relatives of the Crown Prince, who I knew from uh, a prior life, um, is looking at me going, what's going on? You know, and they're all starting to gather around the gold ATM. And I forget who it was that, that tweeted and said, ah, I remember Barnaby in the UAE and having to go to the State Department to be basically, or not the, uh, the embassy, calling the embassy to make sure everything was okay. So it wasn't the embassy, it was me. <laughs> having to go over and talk to you know people who were part of the, the court of the Crown Prince and explaining, no, I, I know you're not used to extremely heavy drinkers and uh, you just invited a bunch of hackers into your country and they've demonstrated a bunch of crazy terrifying things and now they're eyeing your million dollar gold vending machine. Um, It's Barnaby Jack, he's cool. Don't worry about it. I tell you what, you know, you probably want to know if your million dollar gold vending machine has this problem. So why don't you let them do a little bit? And then uh, when they walk away, why don't you pull the plug on the thing and then move it off the floor? <laughs> and sure enough, everybody got a little tired because of course there's some research that has to go into these things and the alcohol fueling only lasts so long. Um, and when everybody got a little tired and, and decided to walk away, the next day you see there's this big curtain pulled around everything and nobody's allowed near the thing but you know so 
there was no reach out to the uh, embassy, and there was no international incident. Um, but there was uh, there was Barnaby Jack, and he'll be missed. Thank you. Okay. Um Oh ne, der Talk geht noch. Da gibt es noch Fragen oder so. So, I'm John Overhyde, but I'm joined up here by just a very small subset of the CFT performers that uh, were involved with Mudge's DARPA program, Cyber Fast Track. So, <laughs> we want to take an opportunity. Hold on a second. Hey! Oh, fuck. We really just wanted to get up here and uh, thank Mudge for all of his efforts inside DARPA uh, with this program. We all had a lot of fun. Um, you've seen some of the research that's come out of it at uh, DEF CON Black Hat, and there'll only be more that's coming out soon. Uh, but we also want to thank him for his entire career from Loft to DARPA and now onwards to Google. I'm sure there's many more interesting things to come. So please give your strongest round of applause for Mudge and everything he's done for the security community.
too, you know, too much engineering, whatever. It didn't fit the DARPA thing, the CFT thing. I'm like, okay, that's fine. But it sort of drove me to like, I was like, I gotta get a CFT in. All my friends are doing it. It's like, I gotta take advantage of this while I can, man, before it goes away. So um, eventually I got one in and I'm still working on it right now. And, and it occurred to me that it's, it's, uh, it's not that you can like, you're doing this project to make money, right? You're not doing a job to make money. It's the fact that you're able to get money to do what you want to do, and you know, it's all well, you do. What, you do what you love to do, and you're not losing money. Is sort of what it is, and that's sort of what we try to do at the loft. Is like do what we want to do and not lose money, but make sure that we can keep kind of pushing things. So I don't know. I just wanted to say that. I don't know if you notice on the back. Can someone turn around? On the back of these shirts, it says "Making the Theoretical Practical Since 1992." <laughs> and I don't know how we came up with that. But that was one. That was one quote that we talked about. You know, writing exploits and kind of showing vendors like, look, this it, this is a possibility. But the one that that isn't on the back of the shirt is um, what we always used to say about making a dent in the universe when we were at the loft. I think Mudge actually came up with that. So we, you know, we'd be in, in interviews and news stuff and press, and Mudge would always say, "We're gonna make a dent in the universe." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." You know, I I said it, but I was like, "That's total bullshit." <laughs> like, how are we gonna make a dent in the universe? We're like seven guys with, you know, he had long hair, as you know, and seven guys in a warehouse, like, how are we going to actually make, you know, make a dent in the universe, other than in the hacker community, that's like a small, that's not the universe, that's our universe, but it's not the universe, um, but he actually believed it, you know, and I was sort of like, yeah, hey, I was going along with it, but he believed it, and it didn't actually hit me until he got to DARPA and did CFT, and it's like, holy shit, he did make a dent in the universe, you know, like, that, what he did, and the, and the work that came out of CFT, like, totally changed the world, whether it's immediate or whether it's later, it changed the government, it changed the thought process, it's amazing. So I just wanted to personally thank him and, and welcome him back out of working for the man, back into like the normal world. So thanks. <laughs> You also have to say that uh, Charlie is responsible for probably 70% of the CFTs that were submitted. I had a very similar phone call with him, I don't know, a couple years back. I remember distinctly. And, uh, you know, people have a very interesting opinion of what it's like to participate in any sort of DARPA or government grant. And, um, you know, speaking with Charlie and, and learning about the uh, streamlined process and the kind of low uh, overhead it takes to uh, get a grant through and actually get funding to, again, do what you want to do, and was very attractive. So um, I think this program itself was wildly successful alone, but I think it's also changed a lot of our personal views about dealing with the government. I hope that can continue uh, with CFT, with the next program manager. I would also say that uh, BITSYS, are there any of the BITSYS guys up here? So BITSYS helped run the program for DARPA. So we'll all give them a round of applause ourselves because they're great to work with. I, I hadn't registered for DEF CON in over 20 years, which brings some perspective. And I, I've known this guy for a very, very, very long time, and he always wanted to be something greater than the average bear and to change things. And I don't know if he'd mind me saying this, but I'll say it anyway. Um, back in the day, when his hunger was great, he asked me to take over the loft, which is probably a bad idea for a variety of reasons. but. I had faith in them that he is going to figure it out, and he did. And I've worked for him now for the last couple of years. Unfortunately, I've been uh, fired by him because the program is ending. But uh, congratulations, guy! You really did good. Thank you. That's the weird note. That's not good for you, but I just want to say something nice. super quick. Uh, we're hackers and we're individualists and we hate anyone speaking for us, but Mudge is pretty much the only guy that I'll let speak for me anytime he wants. Okay, das war's dann wirklich mit dem Video. Uh, das war's dann auch mit der Episode. Das war DEFCON 21. Much unexpected stories from a hacker inside the government. Okay, um, ja, wir sehen uns in der nächsten Folge.